Bruce, you've got me. Hello everyone, welcome. Today we will be discussing uh, 3D animation process from animatics to final animation. And I am Dipanita Manna and currently working as an animation team lead. And last six years I'm working with Micros Animation. Hello everyone, my name is Arjun Babu. I'm a senior animator over here at Micros and it's been six years since I joined here. So Dipanita, do you mind sharing like how you got into this industry? Uh, actually, uh, from my childhood, I love to do traveling yeah. and watching movies. Uh, not only animated movies, uh, I explore. I love to explore different genre movies. Yeah. And while traveling, I observe people and how they behave, like their reaction, how they are unique from each other, their culture. So I make my library ready. Mm. So I feel in this field, I can utilize my library here. So whenever I'm working on any shot, I can implement my previous experience here. That's why I came to this field and where I can explore the human reactions and their behavior and give my best. Oh, nice. Nice. Good to what know. What about you, Arjun? You know, like I was always fascinated by uh, the people, the way people react or act or like I used to, like certain uh, minute uh, uh, actions of my uncle or teachers, you know, I always used to uh, imitate them in front of people, you know, like, and I tried to make it funnier as much as possible. And uh, growing up with Jungle Book, you know, like, uh, it actually played a big, huge part in my life. And then slowly, slowly, you know, like, and at the same time, you know, like, I had a fascination towards drawing as well, not painting, drawing, and especially like um, copying what uh, Mickey Mouse or Donald Duck, and these are the things which I grew up watching. And then uh, one fine day, you know, someone actually suggested me like, okay, there is something called animation. No? And I came across a, uh, a studio which actually offers training and all. And uh, yeah, and from there, you know, like there's no turning back. And I found it very fascinating and I'm still going at it. Yeah. Great to know. From animatics only, we get to know the story, the purpose of the shot, characters' action, their dialogue. And from character design, we know how the character is going to look like, their age, uh, gender, their height, their other body features. And then we go through the character bible, which is very important because before uh, going for the acting shoot or collecting reference, we should know the character very well, like their nature, how they will behave in certain situation and uh, their history also. So when we have this information, then comes the main job of an animator that is choosing the right acting choice based on this information. So here I follow mainly two rules. First is collecting reference. So collecting reference means uh, be it episodic, be it feature or game or even creature. Uh, I like to get as many reference as possible and I always go down to my memory lane. I collect those information from my experiences like I try to remember I have seen the same situation in somewhere maybe in a movies maybe in my real life or any news or reels or anything so I start to imitate that same situation in my acting shot 
so uh, i know how they going to react because i have seen these characters in my real life suppose i'm animating a kid character who is around 4 uh, or 5 years age okay and he, he was asking for something or hoping for something and it didn't happen the way he wanted so he can either lying on the floor throw his hands and legs on the air and crying like anything maybe rubbing his nose and wiping his tears okay so this kind of kids emotion we have seen in some movies maybe in our neighborhood maybe in our family also so we can imi- imitate the same emotion in our short maybe the character is little older maybe a teenage girl or boy he will not that much upset maybe he will little ang- angry okay so how he will react so he can be little upset like Uh, we can see the both expression like anger and the upset in the same time in teenage character but while i'm animating a mid age uh, gentleman who is so like 40 or 45 years of age and he is expecting a promotion but it didn't happen so he will be upset but he will not show that much uh, that upset or crying or something he can be like so we can see the determination that he is preparing himself for the future okay and again he is upset but also he is thinking rationally and again now we are animating in very old character who is around 80 years of age maybe our gra- grandfather or grandmother who is like a wise wise most wise person we know in our family maybe he was asking his son to stay extra two days with him uh, and his son leave got cancelled so he will be like okay everything is fine i didn't mind anything so he will smile like okay no problem so that sadness is there but he will not show because he is wise enough to hide his emotion okay and he will give that uh, positive uh, smile to his son so we witness this kind of emotion every day everywhere in our real life so we need to recall this emotion from our past experiences and copy it in our short so keeping it simple means i really want to animate something which is very simple and relatable uh, i don't feel like giving uh, unnecessary movement or bigger movement uh, which we see in regular life suppose i'm working on a acting short uh, where a teenage girl is talking to her high school crush and she will be excited but she will not show that uh, in her face okay she will be like hi how were you so that small uh, adjusting the hair we can feel like she is uh, like excited but also feeling shy uh, so that small gesture will sell the emotion in other scenario suppose a character is waiting outside of an interview room and he is very nervous so what he can do uh, he can adjust his ties <coughs> and maybe checking his uh, watch so this action will sell the whole idea like he is nervous also he is not showing also he is preparing himself for the interview so this small gesture we can implement in our short so that immediately we will recall okay that gesture we have seen in this situation same situation so audience can uh, relate to us directly so with this experiences this emotion we know the character and now we can go to the acting room and Uh, we can shoot our acting videos maybe several times we can shoot with different ideas then we can choose it from the videos like this part is working very well the other videos we we can see the some other acting is going very perfectly fine uh, so we can merge or collaborate the acting videos and we can work on our acting shots so continuing from dipanita once a reference is confirmed from the director side and the supervisor side we are good to go towards the next stage which is the blocking one blocking two and then we are, we are good to go for the next one which is spline spline one and spline two and then we will go to the next one so in my case like once the reference is booked reference is locked i am going towards blocking one and the layout being done already i don't have to worry about the camera or uh, the staging of the characters now I just have to worry about the blocking part. Look, we are diving straight into the story now. In the blocking, first pass, we are looking only at the 
key poses that is which is the storytelling like i just want i just have to make sure okay these poses the characters are in they are comfortable in that position or in that pose like will i be able to sit like that will i be able to jump like that will i will i ever react like that basically the audience should get the idea okay what the character is going through and if it is suppose like say like if it is around 200 frames we'll have around maybe 3 or 4 let's keep it minimal let's not do a lot of poses let's have three or four main poses and once that is locked we are good to go for the next one this is only for the i would say this is applicable for the acting shots whereas in the action shots the whole scenario is different we may have to use proxies like a, a cube or a sphere in that case you know like uh, because if the character is jumping from one thing one wall to the other we don't know like because here the character is just stand uh, uh, in acting shots mostly the character is just in one place whereas in the action poses action shots the character will be moving from one place to the other and so along with the camera and in that case no like uh, we may have to uh, retime everything so i prefer in these cases i use a proxy instead of the character once that is locked i attach to the the character to the proxy and there it is easier for me to go ahead finalize the blocking one so that is my blocking pass one once i have my blocking pass one done i can move towards my blocking pass two in blocking pass one i have already gotten my key poses with the expressions and even the minute details like the fingers and everything is already sorted i don't have to worry about that anymore i can look into blocking pass two and in my case in my workflow i find blocking pass 2 to be the most crucial one because this is going to help me in the spline pass every different animators has their own uh, style of uh, workflow you know like uh, some people uh, uh, go with post to post and some go with uh, straight ahead in my case i uh, i like using something like hybrid so i go with post to post and then i go with go to straight ahead so this way you know like i won't wander off i will stay stick to the time you know like i everybody should have a timeline okay within this time frame i have to finish this sh- shot like or else like we tend to wander off you know like we don't know okay we, we might end up making too many pauses in that's that used to happen to me that's why like i, I came to this conclusion that okay hybrid is best for me so like uh, since uh, in the first pass itself like we have the time uh, main key pauses done i'll be looking into the the rest of the parts that is like okay there will uh, we will have breakdown poses or the transition Transi- transition transitions as in like uh, if the character suppose if the character is in shock and then she realizes something so from that pose to this pose how am i transitioning the character that is something which i look into here and uh, the spacing or the timing or the holds which uh, which actually plays a huge role in the uh, in acting shots you know like sometimes or even in action in that case you know the hold where am i giving that and how is it is it uh, the, uh, is it going to be a cushion in or like a, how is it it's a ease out everything will be planned out over here in the blocking pass 2 you know like and uh, by seeing that one should know like okay this is going to be the pace of that particular scene like uh, this that's why like uh, in my case i find this part to be the most crucial one in blocking pass 2 itself like i also make sure that okay certain facial expressions are included like um uh, certain expressions like okay if in case the mouth uh, mouth shapes or like a uh, blinks for example blinks i find very important like especially uh, what i find is like blink acts like more like an edit between or a cut between one emotion to the next or uh, it shows actually th- a thought process or maybe i'm thinking something and then suddenly i realize something and it will be always nice to have a blink in between it's a basic thing like uh, uh, growing up you know like or uh, while learning animation i was told that there should be a blink in every this many seconds not necessarily you don't have to just keep blinking every uh, here and there you know so it just you just have to add at the right spot and if the blink is in the, in the wrong plays no you miss out the acting you miss out the emotion there so i find the uh, blinks or like certain uh, facial uh, expressions and everything is very important so let's make sure 
we have all that planned out in this particular pass which is the blocking too so in my case like i said that once it's one of the most important passes in animation workflow now we have the blocking pass 2 done we have almost everything done almost let's say around 80 per 70 to 80 percent of the job is done in, because in the blocking pass 2 itself we uh, the, uh, our client and our, our our leadership team knows exactly what i'm doing here now and so now we have done with that and i don't have to worry about the timing now what we are looking into what is finessing the shot you know like it's adding certain small small nuances or we are checking like okay if everything is going right you know like uh, what is leading or um, if certain like uh, for example in our body you know like while i'm uh, while i'm talking to you no part is moving together you know like uh, everything is you know like everything has its own job or like it's not actually like ra nothing is random so we have to make sure like everything is on point so for example like you know like um, in case uh, certain movements of my body is actually taking away the attention of our audience you know all that we have we are looking over here and i'll also start looking into cleaning up the graph which is very important tool and which actually helps in most of the cases like ease in ease out and all those things you know like let's um, spline is where like we look into that I also should mention that like there we it, all this depends on what kind of project we are working on in certain cases you know like um, uh, in some case some people will be working on series and some people will be working on feature and both these you know like their budget or the timing uh, time given uh, to, uh, for the artist is it depends on the kind of project we are working on so in features we have blocking one blocking two sometimes spline one and spline two but in certain series, if the budget is less, there's only blocking one and block and then spline one and then final. That's it. So all this depends like uh, on the timing, how much time we are g given. So if we are spline in the spline, mostly I look into polishing the character. If there are small small jerks or if they, all the curves are going fine or like uh, the arcs, and if there is no like sudden stops like um, and uh, the eyebrow movements all this you know like even the my most minute things i check over here and if we have in features if we have spline 2 we look into the secondaries as well if the character has a tail or a ponytail or hair clothes clothes animation if we don't have a cloth simulation animator will have to do the clothes as well so in that case you know like the, the, we will be looking into the spline 2 which is mostly secondary actions you know like um, uh, the finger movements or like that again depends you know like those are small small details which we can go into fingers and everything mostly like we get it done in the spline one itself but the rest of the secondary actions in spline two now comes the polishing part uh, in polishing part we can differentiate between episodic and feature because in episodic we have limited time so we can target some extent of quality like in episodic i feel i give more importance to the performance because we don't have that much time to work on the polishing in feature quality we can say like there's no limit in polishing so where we and the director is like uh, feeling okay it's good enough we can stop here that is uh, selling the idea so we stop there so in polishing we target few things there are so many things basically the first like arc normally in animation we do arc while splining the shot or something in polishing suppose i'm holding a prop okay and i'm want to throw it okay so normally we track this wrist the arc of the wrist but in in feature quality we track this elbow this wrist even the tip of the remote so it should all the three things should go on arc so this is one point and the second you can say suppose we are holding this remote and normally in animation we do it like this so all the fingers are holding it together so in real life if you see we hold it from the pinky finger like this it's a very slight difference but we don't go like this it's like this so these slight differences we can implement in polishing pass and if you uh, polish the expression like if i'm smiling this corner is going up like 
and it pushes my cheeks up and also it gives influence to my lower eyelid so it will also go little up so this will give the organic flow of my face and this kind of small small details will we can add in polishing pass so this is all about character polishing now we can focus on the props like if i'm holding a cloth maybe this cloth is made by uh, some silk material so if i keep it here it its tendency to slip it up so it moves like very fast and it slips if i keeping a cloth made by wool or maybe a cotton cloth so it will keep the same shape and it will stay here okay if i'm keeping something is woolen it can little bounce and settles here so it's based on our timing and the spacing we can decide the material okay suppose i'm holding a sandwich i can only hold it and whatever the action is doing carrot is fine but if i am giving little squash so i can feel like in the sandwich we have cheese maybe other stuffing is there so i can squash and then eat so i can feel like okay this fluffy very, very tasty some some texture we can add with our action okay and suppose i am wearing a slipper so slipper is like uh, completely not attached with our feet it's like the rear section is uh, free the front section is like attached with our feet so whenever the feet is going up it can follow the action but it will not go together it always comes in delay so because of the nature of the slipper so this small small thing we can implement in this stage to make not only the character even the props believable and these are all about the polishing stage now we move to next stage that is qc and hookup I believe now you have a fair idea about what the animation workflow is. Now we have reached the final portion of animation where we check the quality checking. In the studios we call it QC. Here what happens is like in certain times you know sometimes you might find a lot of unnecessary assets in within the file. This will make the file a little too heavier for the next phase. So what we do is we clean the file. We remove all the unnecessary assets also in animation we might use anim layers we may have to bake those layers as well so they won't there won't be multiple layers we might have to, we we have to clean those layers as well and parents we have to clean them so all this together we call it quality check now we are done with our shot and the next stage is hookup so we are working on a single shot but we have to check the previous and the next shot as well so the if there is any prop is placed in our shot and we have to match the hookup throughout the sequence the character position uh, even the character pose sometimes we don't give the priority to the action hookup which is very important uh, action hookup means suppose uh, in shot number 5 i'm turning at the beginning of the shot i'm turning so i'll start taking the turn from the big, uh, the previous shot maybe in shot number 4 i'll shift my weight and maybe take the anticipation and in shot number 5 i'll start the turn so why i'm doing it because um, i may be working in a particular shot but it shouldn't look like when i'm play playing the whole sequence like one shot at the end i'm giving cushion and settle in stops then again in next shot it starts again and it stops there so it will be like the individual shot not like whole sequence playing together so if you maintain the action hook up from the previous shot to next shot then it will look like it's a continuous movement so that's why the action hook up is very important and obviously the other hook up i already told like uh, pose expression uh, props character placement these are also very important so i would say like um, depending on the project this is some projects are very realistic some projects are uh, semi realistic that is, which means they are a little realistic but towards a little towards uh, cartoony and then there are extreme cartoony so uh, i would say cartoony means like you can do whatever you want to do with the characters especially like looney tunes and all but if you see looney tunes what it is like is i would say like they are, they do a lot of um, stretches or like uh, they make the characters bend like crazy but what they do is like the say they they might repeat the same uh, action so the character the viewers should see what what is happening you shouldn't be like you always should keep in mind that okay there is the timing the timing is very important so 
the characters should be seen and the, the same time you know like and uh, then again you need reference anyways but cartoony animation you can't do cartoony reference right we can't get cartoony reference no matter how much we act also we can't do uh, we uh, we won't be able to make it cartoony enough so in those cases what you can do is like uh, we can always use uh, other softwares like quicktime or uh, maybe in Maya itself we can uh, do that basically like uh, how it works is like we can take these footages to Maya or any software whatever you uses I use Maya and in there you know you can adjust the timing to a certain limit but again this is these are all references from your end also you have to put in a lot so your shot comes out good now uh, this is about uh, cartoony and se uh, semi realistic and realistic it's uh, much more, I would say, easier compared to cartoony, I would say. Easier as in, like, the references will help you a lot. Uh, but, um, again, uh, say, um, moving from one cart uh, one project to the other, it will take an animator some time to get used to the new style. But you will definitely do that. Regarding planning of a shot, so before i start blocking i will have an idea like okay what the shot is going to be if there is any if there are any props i'm using or if the character is it's a, just a dialogue so then in that case you know i should know okay like uh, is, uh what i'm going to use am i going to am i going to be sticking only to ik or am i going to use fk or if i'll be switching between ik and fk um and uh, at the same time uh, I should know like uh, what's the orientation if it is X Y Z or Y X Z or X like uh, uh, vice versa. You know like you have you should have a clear idea, or else like uh, the, you will have problems like gimbal lock and things like that. And uh, then uh, obviously you should know like uh, 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 I prefer the head to be in local, so it will it won't be going with the with your body. You know like head should be always moving separately. Uh, those kind of things we we should always keep in mind and with people you know like changes some people work with um, uh, post to pose or straight ahead in my case i prefer uh, a hybrid form which is which includes both post to pose and hybrid uh, post to pose and uh, sorry uh, straight ahead uh, so which these are styles which you develop over the course of time you know like with experience it comes and uh, just make sure like um, before you start you are fully equipped with good references, solid references. Speak to your seniors and always get um, uh, get enough information to start uh, before you start off your work. I know for many animators, it's a daunting task. You have to remember at the end of the day, your animated short going to broadcast, not your acting reference. First, I can say like uh, you you try your acting in front of a mirror. That is a gross stereotype. I do not throw poop. Uh, when you are confident enough, you can start your shooting. Okay. And you can take several takes so that you can get few clips from this video, few clips from that video, whatever you feel perfect. And you can collab that, merge that video and you can get a solid good acting reference. <laughs> I know I would. So that's why I'm walking up to you right now and walking right past you. Why do you ask? Because Sally, I'm afraid. Afraid of what you want to know? I feel this way uh, you will make more confident and think like this is for you, uh, not uh, for any other. It's just will help your shot to improvise. Yeah. Oh, that's my mom. I gotta go. So, like, um, when do you work on your uh, lip sync? Do you prefer working in the blocking stage or uh, in your spline stage, like one or two? Like? Uh, in that case, I do my lip sync in few stages. While I'm working on the blocking, uh, that time I start uh, with my jaw movement. Mm. Only up and down movement I add in blocking pass okay. so that I can get the proper heat in proper frame. Right. Then I uh, continue with my spine pass. In spine pass, I add the shapes of the mouth. Okay. Uh, I animate my lip sync based on the sound 
not on the phonemes like a m b p i don't follow that right. how i am getting the sound so i animate according to that right so while i'm um, doing polishing and all after everything is done then i'll add the emotion like if the character is smiling so i add the smile while adding the smile if the uh, if the shape is destroying so i reduce the smile so in that way i do the add the emotion in the shot and in this kind of stages i complete my lip sync oh nice so arjun how you polish your expression that's a great question at the same time it's quite tough to you know like uh, no matter i feel this is my personal opinion no matter how much we dig into it like we'll never be happy because it's a very uh, very subtle moment especially the eyes you right. know like it's very subtle uh, especially when it uh, comes into feature right and uh, the eyebrow like they convey a lot of emotions like you know like more than your lips you know like your mouth you know like if i'm while i'm talking to you i'm looking directly in your eyes right like and i know like okay what so certain even your thoughts is being read through your eyes yes. right so you know like um, and uh, when we are working when i am working in, um, on my eyebrows on my character's eyebrows mostly like i work i don't know the uh, the uh, the names of these muscles so but what i i would say is like this one a this is where actual movements happen and the rest is just following right. the second will be b that is this side the center one and the last one is this one and over here it is very little so when you go up you know like this when a goes up b follows and c very little so uh, sometimes i use what i used to do is like i used to make a lot of up and down like that is very confusing that will confuse the hell out of the viewers mm -hmm. so make it subtle and at the same like and you can use it in different ways i would say like when the head pops up you can lead it with the eyebrows so the audience will know okay something is coming up so the eyebrows goes up and then the head and then at the same time you know what are you doing you know like then uh, the eyebrow can come down and th when the eyebrows come down you know slowly like your eyes also squeezes down you know the same way with the blinks also we don't do that like uh, while uh, in uh, normal life while we blinking our eyebrows doesn't go down but it gives a subtle good feeling to it is squishy like it's a muscle it's all connected that kind of feel comes uh, yeah comes there and another um, important thing is like um sometimes you know like uh, we have to raise one eyebrow up right like uh, like if you are doubtful or questioning or things like that you know then those cases we have to make sure this both the a's are connected in one line you know yeah. it's, it should be in a s curve like that you know uh, or else it should be like in a boat yeah. they both should follow that path or else it will be disconnected from each other so all these minute things these are very few points which we can consider which i can talk about now because there are so many things we can talk about expressions you know so yeah so arjun what are the common tools you are using while animating a shot nice um so uh, in my case my favorite ones are um, animboat and studio library i'll always make sure that these two are ready like uh, i always keep it open because um uh, if you start initially there were a tools mg tools and all now the latest is animboat which is which is a paid tool but very helpful like uh, there are uh, multiple choices of uh, tools i still haven't explored most of them but whatever i use you know they are very helpful like uh, it cuts down the time you know like yeah. uh, it makes things very fast and so is uh, the studio library like uh, for example i what i do is like sometimes you know like we have to uh, reuse certain poses uh, like um, a fist or like expressions or some phonemes we have to reuse so and every time sculpting every control is time taking right. so if we keep it ready right like an in your folder in a folder you just have to select a control and select everything and then apply it. and helps you so much and i think these two are a blessing like yeah so dipanatha what would you what do you think the common challenges faced by our animators uh, i feel uh, like maximum animators do their acting shoot right. okay but they don't know what are the things they should pick from that acting reference okay they start blindly following the whole acting reference and it makes their shot very rigid pose by pose like yes and we are like real character we have built by original muscle and uh, flesh but our character has only controls 
so we can follow the acting reference but also we have to tweak on that we have to add some extra movement maybe somewhere is not working well we have to think differently okay so at the end we can merge our imagination and our acting reference together so that we can get that feelings from our animated character ah so it's right cool cool awesome and what do you think in my case you no know, what i think is like uh, i uh, personally i face this issue it's not a challenge it's something which we can improve upon uh, so something what i would say is like every animator or at least our aspiring animators uh, should uh, along with uh practicing acting shots or action shots they should also try moving holds mm. it's like a uh, moving holds as in like those who don't know i say like it's something um, about uh keeping the character alive these these characters could be behind the scene basically secondary like uh, secondary characters around the, uh, it's in and around the scene so they could be talking or they 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 are in a cafe and like a peop- uh, the uh, the commoners or people behind in the market or something whatever so they shouldn't be like acting too much like uh, taking the attention of our viewers yeah. but at the same time they should be alive yes. very much alive like how it is in our uh, in the market around us or like uh, in our office how people react so it's better if we such um, if we study those things we definitely record them or just watch them i would say like and uh, in this case you no know, like uh, how i overcame this uh, uh, thing is I started using anim layers a lot more, so um, a layer by layer we can start working on it. Uh, it's not necessary that the, the character is shouldn't be like the character is having some breathing trouble, you know, like they shouldn't be yeah, yeah, just breathing and blinking. No, so uh, in this case, no, like it's best to know some a little bit of more body mechanics mm-hmm. and don't overdo it. Um, we should always remember that little is more. you know so just keep it subtle and, and simple yeah so it's always good to practice this as well i would say yeah okay. any tips for the aspiring animators how to improve the yes. the skills no yes and so i would say my first choice would be sketching uh, like sketching as in like uh, don't make it very like clear or very detailed no it just scribbles just thumbnails is good the only thing is don't show it to your uh, subject saying that this is your portrait they not going to definitely like it because this is just as scribbles so mine would be like a sketching will be the first option and uh, then um, keep practicing a lot keep keep working again and again and keep asking other animators or your seniors yeah. or everyone and anyone in around the world if you find someone whose work is really good just ask them what do you think about my work you know they will definitely give you suggestions and they will definitely give you ideas how to improve Yes, sir. You know, I'm sure you also uh, probably will have some ideas, right? Like uh, tips. Yeah. What do you think? So basically, I start like with uh, for the new animators. What I have observed, like they give more focus on the software. Mm. Like they think I have to learn this software, this software, this software. Then only I. Lo- I, I totally I agree. Yeah, yeah. Start learning animation, but this software will just a tools. Right. You are using these tools to bring your an imagination, right? suppose i am a painter and i know how to sketch so i know how to use the pencil okay but i am only good with the pencil that doesn't mean i am a good yeah, true true right? yeah so first you know the skill like uh, how to bring that uh, performance uh, how the character is moving from one move, one position to another position these are the thing which makes you a good animator then the software will help you to uh, do that i okay. totally agree hmm. and the second suggestion uh, i can say like watching movies hmm. okay so what i used to do i used to keep the movies in mute and i just see the visuals even maybe in slow version okay. slow motion i see mm-hmm. the visuals mm-hmm. so that i can see like how the character's expression is slowly changing mm-hmm. how they are uh, shifting their weight and going mm-hmm. here and there so you can see it's very clearly Okay, if you just turn off the audio and check, you will feel the difference. That's new to me. Yeah. Yeah. So at the end, we are living in a real world. We right. can see 
the original character, real character is walking here and there. True. Their real expression, like how frustrated uh, your fellow animator was uh, when his shot was not approved. Right, okay, right, so right, right. You can collect those emotion and their their behavior, and you can uh, keep it in your library, right. and you can implement that in your shot. Right. So don't. Uh, Obviously, you observe this situation, don't stare, but don't stare, don't, don't stare make them become, uncomfortable. Right, 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 right. But yeah, right. observe, observe right. the surroundings. Thank, Thank you all for joining. joining.